the work of, of my studio has always been guided by the principle that urban space is public and democratic like air and water. And it's up to us, we're responsible, I think all of us, to protect the public realm. Architecture is so slow, it's so geo-fixed. How can you imagine architecture of distinction without generic form? Diversity Plaza is a little patch of ground right outside the subway in Jackson Heights in the borough of Queens in New York. Now Jackson Heights really lacks for any kind of public space. There aren't any big parks, there aren't even small parks. This is space now. Uh, it's just got a few benches, really nothing much has been done to it. But if you want to know what's happening with the Bangladeshi elections or relationships between Tibetans and Chinese, you can go to Diversity Plaza and find little groups of immigrants and you find these people debating the politics of their homelands and you can pick up stories of these people. It's an incredibly human space in the big city. The idea was, you know, to take this uh, a piece of property which was unused and bring green space uh, into an area that was really underserved by green space, but also with an argument uh, to serve as a catalyst. So unclaimed urban spaces can be transformed into inclusive places rich in function diversity, places of resilience where despite the surrounding violence, young people like Lalo can teach their dance classes. This talented dancer might never be able to leave Fresnillo, but this place has given him hope, joy, and an opportunity to share his talents and become a leader. Today, there are more than 100 kids playing there every day. It's become an active playground. Play has become essential to reduce insecurity and violence. We saw a really fantastic opportunity here, which was to renegotiate the relationship between the museum and the street by taking the street into the museum and taking the museum out onto the street. The way that the public use the courtyard has been transformative. It's changed the way people see the museum and it's changed also the way the institution see themselves. It's sometimes the things that you don't do that allow the unexpected to happen. And that's why we did not clutter the courtyard with all the paraphernalia that goes with a, an entrance and why we kept it as flat as possible so that it could be appropriated by the public. You could see that there is a, you know, a, an invitation for the public to come in and, and use the, the public space in a kind of uninhibiting way, very, very different from other Moscow parks. Then all of a sudden came press about how this park has promoted uh, sexual activities in the park. We felt like, wow, this is a success. Uh, people are feeling so free in the space that they can really enjoy the space and each other. So to us, it was a victory. One of the problems we have in our cities across the world is that we concentrate where the rich live. And the rest of the cities and the suburbs and the experts also uh, deserve this kind of humanizing the talents of our best architects and planners. And unfortunately, uh, right now, they seem to be located where the money is. I think it's our responsibility as architects to spark these conversations, to provoke debate about this kind of thing and maybe, you know, bring the private sector and the public sector together. Guerrilla action is one. Just take over a site, you know, and use it in an interesting way and then see if it takes. Two is um, become citizen activists, uh, expand the agency of architects to actually imagine things, convince people, um, show them the benefits, what's in it for them, you know, and um, get people to do the right thing. Um, and, and the last thing is, it's really in the end uh, a matter of policy and it's having a seat at the table and being able to influence uh, uh, the government. What has made us be here today is the shared concern of rethinking urban spaces 
as places to meet and connect for humans to interact. And I think I can speak for all of us here that more than ever, we all want to gather together. Through place making, we built with the community, not only for it. Our design substitute barriers for boundaries. Place making is understanding that the value of architecture is not only laying bricks, but activating a social construction. Cities are also changed by the small interventions or acupunctures that once you're adding many of them, you're changing the city. But the perfect storm of the pandemic, combined with the trend for online shopping, has forced many department stores to close. And I want to see if we can reimagine a new way of being within the shell of a vacant department store, because integrating the urban and nature has never been more important. More than ever, we need to think of how to humanize three places, the bazaar, the park or the playground, and the library. In the post-pandemic world, we were greater than ever need for us to connect. We must seek content in context, change barriers into boundaries, start with a shift of perception, approach the landscape as the program, resignify materials, work with temporality, and hold beauty as a basic right.